Hey guys, um, so I wanted to just do some quick overview of some things that I think would help people out coming into Overwatch. Obviously the early access stuff is actually going to start here pretty soon. I felt like, you know, might as well get that out and at least have some sort of information for people just coming to the game fresh for the first time. Um, this is also a video test, so for whatever reason there's stuttering or anything like that, I'm, you know, currently testing that out, trying to make sure it's proper for the actual full release of the game. So you'll have to excuse any imperfections. I'm also using a microphone here that's uh, mainly used for um, the competitive play. That's not my professional mic, so I apologize if the audio quality is also pretty mediocre. But uh, anyways, I um, wanted to get into some quick sort of details about how to properly balance your game uh, for performance uh, for uh, speaking on like competitive matches only. So like when you get into a competitive match, you're typically trying to deal with... Um, a bunch of different issues that you need to react very quickly on and because of this you want you know highest frame rate and you want to also try and maximize the smoothness of the game and all that stuff so in the top left corner you've got um, the fps you, you know you temp your temp of your your car your ping um, your rtt which is basically the amount of time that it takes for the server to actually in, uh, initiate the response um, from your pc to the server um, so it's basically like that and also during the, the video demonstration that I'm doing right now, we're also going to be using this stat line, which uh, just popped up, which is a control shift N. The top left one is control shift R. Um, you can access these at any point in time, any matches. You don't have to be in like practice mode or anything like that to bring these up. So just to kind of um, explain uh, just a few things of what these are. Um, latency, obviously, that's the ping time that, to the server updated a little bit quicker than actually the shift um, R one. So you get a more um, responsive uh, ping times, kind of see if you're testing stuff that's kind of useful. Um, sim is the amount of time that it actually takes for your cursor to move uh, on the screen. Um, so if you basically, it's basically like the display lag on your PC. So the amount of time that it takes for your, your cursor to actually move. Um, and you can actually see when you, when you move it, it typically gets a little bit higher, um, depending on, on uh, the what it's rendering and background processes that you, you've got running to record. But um, anyways, uh, right now, it, obviously, it's a little bit different because I'm using OBS to record this stuff, so you'll have to bear that in mind. But right now, we're just you know hovering at like 12 milliseconds, typically, on average, um, for the response, of, uh, response time of, of the uh, mouse moving. So that's rather high. Um, it's about the limit that I can personally stand. Um, right now, I'm optimizing for um, fluidity of mouse movement and turning radius. Um, so a lot of the stuff like V-Sync and triple buffering is on, apparently that you'll see here, um, that normally a lot of people actually turn off. So it's all up to you and how well you are with motion sickness, really. <laughs> I, I turn it on specifically because I like more smooth movement rather than like really jerky movement, um, even though it's like technically lower ping, higher fast, and responsiveness is better. Um, it's kind of all dependent on you. Um, right now I have everything also set at low pretty much except for the model detail and the only reason why I put the model detail as medium is because over distances it's trying to render the model and uh, it'll it'll sort to like a lower um, detailed version depending on the distance that the model is. So if you think of like you know like a Mercy or or a Farah, like their heads will basically morph and move around like the hitbox like kind of changes a little bit not necessarily a hitbox but like the the silhouette changes and and something that you have to very quickly on the battlefield is kind of recognize and quickly spot like what class is in front of you so it it's very important to not have that change you know willy-nilly so that's why i keep it on medium everything else is for clarity and, and uh, frames uh, purposes so um, I keep, you know, texture on low, but then I also have any aliasing you know, at ultra because I want the, the clarity uh, to be sharp for me to be able to hit long range shots. Uh, the rest is kind of self-explanatory. Again, just everything off because you want the highest frames uh, that you can possibly get in the game. My PC is rather old, so a lot of this stuff might not be that big of a, of a deal to you. It also might not improve your performance very much depending on uh, your PC uh, settings and everything. But again, we have VSync on and, and, uh, and triple buffering on. These are the two one, two of the options that you'll actually want to pay attention to. 
if you're looking for more responsiveness. So just as an example, we already know that our average is like 12 um, of the amount of time, uh, 12 uh, milliseconds, the, the amount of time that it actually takes for the responsiveness to actually happen. So we're going to tick these off. And I'm just going to show you how big of a difference this uh, shows. And I'm not sure how this will display in OBS, so I might like have a cut here to um, cut to this the, the next part of the video. Um, so we'll just see what happens. So applied it. So that's done. Let's see if I can give it a second. Okay, it's still at 12. Did it actually apply? <laughs> Okay, it did drop, but uh, barely, really. Um, it's it usually drop, it drops more than that um, when I'm actually on, um, you know, this uh, practice range without OBS on. So OBS might be affecting it, but there is a definite a definite uh, smoothness that you gain uh, just from that little bit. Again, you can try it for yourself if you're looking for evidence or proof. Uh, you can you can do that, but um, also let's turn off limit FPS. <laughs> see if that also affects it so again not, nothing really on the limit fps go back to options and another another thing that also affects the response in this is the render scale um, a lot of people especially in the, the competitive community um, will turn this down to 50 percent it'll look like garbage but you'll gain a pretty significant response time. So yeah, it's already down to like, you know, seven, eight milliseconds, um, six, uh, depending on where you are. And I know that doesn't really seem like a lot initially. And again, it, it will climb based on your movement sometimes or just, you know, background processes that you have. Uh, in my own personal games, without OBS recording, I've been able to get this down to like, you know, four with all these settings turned off. Um, so I, I know that OBS is definitely affecting it or whatever I'm running in the background is definitely affecting it. Um, but uh, it might actually, actually be because I'm running multi-monitor currently instead of single monitor. Um, that's another thing that also affects it, is if you turn off your secondary monitor, um, essentially in the, if you press like um, uh, Windows key and P, you can set it set your, your Windows to actually only display out to whatever display monitor that you want or if you want it to extend, you can also do that. Um, to just help a little bit more in that processing time uh, when you're in the game. Now again, these are all the settings that we currently have. This, I'm just turning this off uh, real briefly just to show you what this game looks like now. As you can see, I don't know how apparent it is from the change, uh, how big of a difference it is from a graphical change, but it's pretty big. Um, but the actual latency uh, feel it definitely feels more, definitely more one-to-one -one, um, on the latency uh, mouse movement, and it doesn't really come across unless you're actually doing it yourself. So it's something that you'll just have to kind of putz with on your on your own to kind of see what what's right for you. For me, the blurriness is uh, definitely not, I, I think, an advantage. Um, so even though that you get you know a couple more milliseconds of time. And the fact that it feels a little bit better on mouse movement is great and all. But for me, it doesn't really uh, feel like it makes that big of a difference. It makes a huge difference in terms of frame rate, as you can see in the top left corner. Uh, but it doesn't really, um, to me, feel like it's that big of an, of an improvement for me. But then again, you know, a lot of this is subjective. So your, you know, your own experience may vary from my own. So feel free to test it yourself. Also, if you go to 75%, um, again, you actually don't lose a lot, um, or at least you don't. It doesn't seem like you gain a lot from 75% to 50%. Um, they're pretty much around the same average. Um, you get a little bit less if you go to 50%. You get down like sixes in terms of like the simulation for the monitor. Um, so you do gain a little bit. Um, but you don't really also gain a lot of visual clarity uh, difference. So, 50% isn't a bigger, isn't that big of a leap um, in comparison to like 100%. But still, it's kind of all up to your own preference. But to me, though, um, the the reason why I use triple buffering and uh, I I use the 100% is because of the fact that um, you know I'm just looking for that clarity. And to me. This feels smoother and more crisp, and I'm able to acquire targets. I think 
better, especially because of the head headshots. At least um, from my experience. And again, I haven't had much um, time to play around with the 50%. I mean, it's very likely that I could get used to it, but would I want to? I don't know. Really but again, that's just those are just some tips, real quick. Uh, just kind of give you an idea. I mean, it, might be helpful to some people. Um, it might make a different a difference to those people who have older PCs to try to try out these things, um, just to kind of eliminate some of that lag. Because um, I know a lot of people, especially with the default settings, you'll have uh, experiences like that where the the mouse will feel a little bit lagged. Um, there's also a couple things that you can do in the controls. You can obviously now, with the new update, go to each and every. Um, you know, uh, character and, and um, you know, move down the sensitivity and all that stuff. Um, you know, up and down, just kind of, um, per, you know, per character. So, like, I've also done the same thing to Reinhardt. I've upped his sensitivity a little bit because he's more melee. You know, I need to be able to swing around constantly really quickly. But in most cases, I've, you know, kept everybody to zero and used my DPI and have resolution as a means of, of messing around with the, the sensitivity. And that's only because it, um, it's a better baseline, is if you keep the, the bottom uh, resolution and bo oh, I mean, sorry, sorry, um, bottom uh, sensitivity, and then you, you um, mess with your DPI. It's a better means of, of keeping that at the same level across games, so that you're not constantly trying to remember where you need to be on terms of sensitivity. So and I, I've been doing that for years since Quake, so it's just a, it's kind of like a natural thing that I I do. But that's up to you. Um, yeah, that's all, all to preference. Again, um, a lot of this stuff is up to preference, so it's up to it's up to you guys whether or not you feel it's really necessary. But uh, a lot of people swear by this stuff, um, so use it as your at whim if you need to. Again, uh, it's Control Shift N to bring up this big panel that is right in front of me uh, that has all this information about the sin, the latency, and the ping, etc. You can also bring the top left one, which is the white um, one, with all the FPS and the, the temps of your, your video card uh, with Control shift r and uh, you'll find out that information there. So again, if you have the game on you know, May and May and you're looking for some advice about how to actually properly make this game feel a little bit better, those are some options. And uh, if you guys have any other questions in the comments, feel free to ask. I'll be happy to answer it. I spent quite a bit of time in this game, so I have a little bit of experience, so if you have any questions, I'm likely to know, or at the very least can forward you guys to where you need to go with any advice. Thanks. Bye.